Hey guys, how's it going? So one of my goals this year was to improve my skills in gesture drawing, and honestly, I think there's no better way to study gesture than by looking at dancers. So this week's scene studies theme is centered around dance. The scene studies I chose were super fun, and I learned so much about flow lines, costume design, and simplifying value structures this week, and I am so excited to show you the studies. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my videos each Friday, and without further ado, let's get to the paintings. So this theme is actually the halfway point for the 100 Scene Studies Challenge, which is kind of crazy. Part of me feels like we've come so, so far, but the other part of me feels like this challenge is never gonna end, <laughs> but we're getting there. So this first study is a scene from Disney's Sleeping Beauty. I am the fakest Disney fan and have never actually seen Sleeping Beauty all the way through, which is nuts because like, seriously, this is gorgeous. The design aesthetic for this movie is insanely beautiful and it's right up my alley so I think I just need to make time to actually watch the thing. Anyways, I knew for sure I wanted to do a Disney princess movie for this theme because they all have really great dance scenes, but I really kind of felt like this one was the most iconic. Also, the little forest animals are just too cute! I mean, the chipmunk, come on! So in the sketch for this one, I really tried to use some sweepy kind of flow lines for Aurora's pose. She is such a graceful dancer, and I didn't want to end up making her look stiff by trying to focus too much on the silhouette. I don't know if I'm making any sense right now, but hopefully you'll see in the painting more of what I mean. It's really interesting because there's a lot of big blocky kind of shapes in the background. There's literally a tree shaped like a rectangle back there, and a bush shaped like a square. But I think those straight, angular shapes really help put more of the focus on Aurora's very fluid movements. It makes her look a lot more gestural by comparison. So studying from movies has really helped me understand a lot more about how each element is designed to fit into the composition of a scene. I'm finally starting to see some of those ideas also implemented into my personal paintings, which is really exciting. The difference is definitely noticeable in my opinion. I don't know, maybe it's not noticeable to anybody else, but I see some growth, so. I really enjoyed painting the trees in this one as evidenced by the fact that that was what I spent the majority of my time on. I especially loved the two very shapey trees because the simplification of the shadows was super interesting. So the green rectangle tree used a blue for the shadows and a sort of diamond pattern to create circular clusters that looked more sunlit. And the blue oval tree uses a grand total of three colors and some little dotty spotty bits placed around the tree to give it dimension. I've discovered that classic Disney movies are perfect for learning how to simplify objects and give them dimension without over rendering. Another thing that was also very interesting to me was the midground branch that mimics the pose of Aurora's arms. I don't know if this is actually intentional since the frame is literally like half a second, but I thought it was cool. In painting this scene, I was reminded of my lack of knowledge for painting hands. They're just so weird and I struggle. I guess that's also something that I need to be working on this year. So next up is a study from one of the most underrated movies of all time, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. It is so good and no one's talking about it. But anyways, this movie is actually what inspired the dance theme. So there's this scene about two thirds or so of the way through the movie where Mr. Megorium and Mahoney are out at this park and they're tap dancing on bubble wrap. I feel like bubble wrap is one of those little magical gifts of life that everybody appreciates no matter how old you are. And this scene is so, so whimsical and magical, even though nothing truly magical is even happening in it. I loved Mogorium's pose in this scene, and honestly, I'm really proud of how the painting turned out, but not Mahoney. Mahoney turned out kind of wonky, and you can't have everything, I guess, so. 
Anyways, I think the live action scene studies are the most challenging for me. In animated movies, the lighting and color is always a little bit extra. There's this kind of vibrancy to it that's not fully realistic, but it's super interesting to look at. But with live action movies, particularly in a scene like this one, where it's kind of like this high noon lighting scenario, it's a little bit harder for me to capture the essence of the scene without it looking a little bit blah. <laughs> I did have fun with the shadows in this one, but we'll get to that later. So I mentioned in the last scene studies video that I've started working background to foreground to help me keep things looking more clean. So I worked wet on wet to block in the background buildings and the trees. Working wet on wet kind of blurs the background, helping it recede in space, but I gotta tell ya, I struggled with the greenery in this piece. I just do not know how to paint plants and group together leaf shapes in trees without making it just look like a big blobby mess. This theme highlighted a lot of my artistic insecurities, if you couldn't tell, so that's fun. I did like the few little bits of purple and red flowers that made a nice break from all of the green. I'm a huge fan of green, I mean, it's very nature-y, so, but the jewel tones added a little bit more pizzazz to the piece. Because there's all these branches overhead, there's a lot of dappled lighting in the scene, which was intensely nerve-wracking for me. I've never really tried much dappled lighting, but I actually had a ton of fun with it. So Magorium and Mahoney are completely lit by the sun, but the ground just behind them is mostly in shadow with just a few patches of light. A general rule for lighting is that if the direct light is warm, there's probably cooler shadows. So I used some bluer grays for the shadows, with some yellows closer to the light patches. It was a ton of fun, and honestly, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, even though I feel like I didn't really do all that much to it. Anyways. My biggest concern from the beginning was How in the world am I going to get this to read as bubble wrap? I mean, even the reference photo is hard to discern that it's bubble wrap because the spots are so tiny. In the end, I decided that just making the shadows more speckly and adding a few clusters of highlights here and there would probably be the best option. Would someone who's never seen the movie look at it and think, Oh yeah, that's a dude tap dancing on bubble wrap. I don't know, probably not, but it's okay. <laughs> Next up is a study from Lilo and Stitch. I'm gonna be honest, the day I painted this was, it was a weird day for me. I started off super pumped and honestly way more excited about painting the background than the actual characters. I mean, look at all the little fruits, so lively. Anyways, I was really looking forward to using gouache in a more watercolor style to kind of mimic the style of the movie, and I was like 100% ready to spend however long it took that day to make this thing look freaking awesome. But then that day ended up not being so good for Ella, so the painting kind of got finished in a little bit of a hurry to make room for some snuggle time. The mojo was kind of lost about midway through, and I think you'll probably be able to tell when you see the finished painting. Speaking of which, make sure you stay tuned to the end so you can see the whole flip through of this theme. Anyways, even so, I still think it turned out pretty decent, and there's nothing stopping me from trying it again sometime in the future, so it's all good. I absolutely love the watercolor backgrounds of Lilo and Stitch. Yes, I am fully aware that this is a dance theme, but I picked this scene probably more for the background. <laughs> I like backgrounds, okay? The watercolor gives a lot of really cool textures compared to the flat kind of cell shading of the characters. I mean, everything about Lilo and Stitch is awesome to me. It is literally my favorite Disney movie. But the art is, it's, it's, it's beyond awesome. So I originally had a different movie scene planned for this theme until my sister was like, Wow, I'm surprised you're not doing anything from Lilo and Stitch. And I was like, Well, I guess we're immediately switching gears because I did not think of that one. I can't not do Lilo and Stitch now. Like I said, I picked this scene because I loved the background, but I also really liked their kind of over-exaggerated poses. I do struggle a lot with flat colors though. 
Because I rarely use gouache straight from the tube, it's always at least a little bit watered down, so it can kind of end up looking a little bit patchy. I have this problem with literally every 2D screen cap repainting, so I'm pretty used to it by now, but it has not gotten easier with time. I never mix up enough of the right color, and then it's just patchy and weird. I swear, each day of painting starts off with me going, Hmm, let's see how many flaws I can get away with today. I cut corners more than I should, admittedly. And I also refuse to use materials the way they were intended to be used, so I do it to myself. Don't be me, guys. Be smart. So this is totally random, but the dance theme made me think of this. I'm kind of not sure I actually want to tell this one. It's such a stupid story. I, it's fine, let's just commit. So back when I was about 10, I think, maybe 11, I don't know, I had the chicken pox. And I could do nothing but just sit and watch YouTube for like a week straight. So I rediscovered the Lizzie McGuire show after having not seen it for years. And there was this one episode where Lizzie does rhythmic gymnastics. Do y'all remember that? Let me know if you were a Lizzie McGuire fan too. Anyway, so I watched this episode like 10 times over the course of that week. And I was like, This. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I'm going to be a rhythmic gymnast. So, I told everyone in my family about this new life goal. And they were like, <laughs> Okay. Silently laughing at me, but whatever. It's fine. I'm used to that. So anyways, I started practicing with a hula hoop. And to be fair, I was a freaking beast at hula hooping. So I started practicing some tricks. Nothing all that exciting. I mean, I couldn't even do a cartwheel. But I was really proud of my little new skills. So I choreographed a routine and made my whole family come watch. Probably charged admission too. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyways, I've always been fascinated with literally anything to do with dance. So this theme was a ton of fun. And now we've reached the final day of studies for this week. Now you might be thinking, Now wait a second, don't you do five scene studies each week? Why yes, yes I do. This week I attempted what I previously thought was impossible. Two scene studies in one day. So bold, so daring, so dumb. Honestly, it wasn't that bad, but I was pretty pooped that day. I really wanted to make time for a coffee date with my sister before she moved, so I switched around my schedule a little bit and did two scene studies in one day. So for these studies, I really focused on simplifying all of the elements in the scene. That was a really loud car. My good sir, you must slow down. This is a family street. Anyways, so for these studies, I really tried to focus on simplifying all of the elements in the scene, not just the backgrounds. So first up is the masquerade scene from Jim Henson's Labyrinth. This was always my favorite scene from the movie when I was little, and if I'm being completely honest, probably still my favorite scene today. The dress, overkill. The hair, overkill. Jareth, I mean, Jareth's always overkill, so... But I don't know, man, there's some, there's some cool vibes in this scene. Very magical, and the music's great too. So when I started sketching this scene, I decided to try to mimic some of J.C. Leindecker's techniques. His simplification of lights and darks and unique shape designs are super cool, and I really wanted to see what this piece would look like in a style similar to his. Obviously, I am no J.C. Leindecker, and he probably would roll over in his grave if he knew that this study was inspired by his style, but nonetheless, I attempted it. The sketch took me a bit more time than usual since I was translating it from live action to line decker, but taking my time on the sketch definitely made the painting process a lot easier. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot to mention that I am using some new gouache this week. I finally caved and bought some more Winter and Newton gouache, so I got the set of 10 that included the 6 that I already own, plus 4 additional colors. I'll link the set down in the description so you know which one I'm talking about. So anyways, the ultramarine gouache from that set was literally perfect for Jareth's coat. I was super pumped. 
So anyways, this whole scene is pretty trippy with weird camera shots and lots of strange costumes and weird decor. <laughs> I tried to stay pretty loose with the background and the background characters while still communicating what's going on in the scene. I also liked all the little hanging candles and beads, and they definitely made the scene feel a bit more, I don't know what word I'm looking for, eclectic, maybe? I don't know, flamboyant? Whatever. Anyways, when I started in on the characters, I stuck to the technique which usually works best for me, which is working dark to light. I have a much easier time maintaining a good value structure that doesn't end up looking washed out if I block in my dark shapes first and then pick out the midtones and the highlights around them. Painting skin is always really weird for me because it's heavily influenced by its surroundings. If Jareth's skin looked like this in, say, a sunny environment, he would literally look like he was knocking on death's door. But because of the lighting setup and the angle of his head in this frame, his skin is very grayed down and it looks right for the scene. Even Sarah's skin looks quite dark, even though it's warmer than Jareth's. But again, it looks like this because of the lighting setup. Skin looks different in different situations, and realistically painting skin is a lot about forgetting what we think skin looks like and actually painting what we see. I really like the fun simplification of shapes in Sarah's dress, and even in Jared's outfit too, but his hair... <sighs> his hair turned out pretty tragic. <laughs> I wanted to use hair shapes like Line Decker does, but it ended up looking like... limp noodles. <laughs> a bummer, but a bummer that informs me how not to do it next time. <laughs> Sarah's hair was definitely easier, as it's more of a silhouette than anything. The little hair jewelry bedazzler stuff was definitely trickier though. Parts of it get lost in the shadows and in the big 80s hair, so I did the best I could and moved on to the next study. The fastest study I've done so far in this challenge, the iconic pose from La La Land. And yes, I did listen to the soundtrack the whole time I was working on this one. If the labyrinth study was simplification, then this is full on baby mode. I literally did the bare minimum in this one. Not in terms of effort, but in terms of light and shadow and shapes. Honestly, I think simplifying it was even harder than just repainting the scene as it was. I really had to sit and study and figure out how I could break down what I was seeing into its simplest elements while still giving it a clear read. I wanted to lose all of the fine details, even the eyes. The sky was such a pain. I am the worst at painting skies. Part of that is me using the wrong paper for this kind of sky, but part of that is also just me not understanding gradients. Thankfully, I've finally purchased a new sketchbook since this one is now full, and the new one is much more conducive to painting skies, so I don't know, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do a skies theme. <laughs> finally get my act together with painting them. Anyways, I really went way too hard on the pavement and repainted certain sections like eight times. I don't know what happened, all I know is I made it way harder than it needed to be. Painting the characters was a ton of fun though. I'm very obsessed with yellow, so obviously I love Mia's dress. I really enjoyed painting the different fabric wrinkles in their costumes and also figuring out how to define them without using too many colors or brush strokes. This is one of those scenes that most people recognize even if they haven't watched the movie, so it was really important to me that the study was also very clear and recognizable. I'm pretty sure I took a nap this day after I finished painting. Even though it didn't take me as long as some of the other scene studies have, it was still quite intense repainting two scenes in one day. But I did it, so that was a nice boost. And I had a really great coffee date with my sister, so that was the real win. So these next few weeks are definitely gonna be a little bit weird for me, trying to navigate working on my art and putting out a video each week, also participating in summer events. This is my first summer working full-time on art and YouTube, so I'm really trying to prioritize what needs to get done while still making time for other life things. Thankfully, I'm my own boss and can be a little bit more flexible, but I also want to make sure that I'm being diligent too. So. Anyways, I still fully intend to put out a video each week. 
I have a few videos worth of footage saved up, so I have a little bit of room to play with. Next week's video is super exciting. I've been working on this project that I showed to the Scoop Troop over on Patreon and may have let a spoiler slip on Instagram a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Whoops. But I'm so excited to share it with you next week, so definitely stay tuned for that. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the dance theme as much as I did. I know I definitely learned a lot about gesture and it was super fun trying out different techniques and testing my limits with this theme. Let me know which study this week was your favorite down in the comments. I know which one's my favorite, but I'm curious which one yours is. If you like my art and want to see more of it, head on over to Patreon to join the Scoop Troop for monthly goodies. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!